In functional programming, a monad is a structure that represents computations defined as sequences of steps, a type with a monad structure defines what it means to chain operations, or nest functions of that type together. This allows the programmer to build pipelines that process data in steps, in which each action is decorated with additional processing rules provided by the monad. As such, monads have been described as programmable semicolons. A semicolon is the operator used to chain together individual statements in many imperative programming languages, thus the expression implies that extra code will be executed between the statements in the pipeline. Monads have also been explained with the physical metaphor as assembly lines, where a conveyor belt transports data between functional units that transform it one step at a time. They can also be seen as a functional design pattern to build generic types. Purely functional programs can use monads to structure procedures that include sequenced operations like those found in structured programming. Many common programming concepts can be described in terms of a monad structure, including side effects such as input-output, variable assignment, exception handling, parsing, non-determinism, concurrency, and continuations. This allows these concepts to be defined in a purely functional manner without major extensions to the language's semantics. Languages like Haskell provide monads in the standard core, allowing programmers to reuse large parts of their formal definition and apply in many different libraries the same interfaces for combining functions. Description Formally, a monad consists of a type constructor M and two operations, bind and return. The return operation takes a value from a plain type and puts it into a monadic container using the constructor creating a monadic value. The bind operation performs the reverse process, extracting the original value from the container and passing it to the associated next function in the pipeline, possibly with additional checks and transformations. The operations must fulfill several properties to allow the correct composition of monadic functions. Because a monad can insert additional operations around a program's domain logic, monads can be considered a sort of aspect-oriented programming. The domain logic can be defined by the application programmer in the pipeline, while required aside bookkeeping operations can be handled by a predefined monad built in advance. The name and concept comes from the eponymous concept and category theory, where monads are one particular kind of functor, a mapping between categories. Although the term monad in functional programming contexts is usually used with a meaning corresponding to that of the term strong monad in category theory, History, the concept of monad programming appeared in the 1980s in the programming language Opal even though it was called commands, and never formally specified. Eugenio Moggi first described the general use of monads to structure programs in 1991. Several people built on his work, including programming language researchers Philip Wadler and Simon Peyton Jones. Early versions of Haskell used a problematic lazy list model for I.O., and Haskell 1.3 introduced monads as a more flexible way to combine I.O. with lazy evaluation. In addition to I.O., programming language researchers and Haskell library designers have successfully applied monads to topics including parsers and programming language interpreters. The concept of monads along with the Haskell do notation for them has also been generalized to form applicative functors and arrows. For a long time, Haskell and its derivatives have been the only major users of monads in programming. There also exist formulations in Scheme, Perl, Python, Racket, Clojure and Scala, and monads have been an option in the design of a new ML standard. Recently F has included a feature called Computation Expressions or Workflows, which are an attempt to introduce monadic constructs within a syntax more palatable to those programmers whose only prior experience has been with imperative languages. Motivating examples, the Haskell programming language is a functional language that makes heavy use of monads, and includes syntactic sugar to make monadic composition more convenient. All of the code samples in this article are written in Haskell unless noted otherwise. We demonstrate two common examples given when introducing monads, the maybe monad and the IO monad. Monads are of course not restricted to the Haskell language, though. The second set of examples shows the writer monad in JavaScript. The maybe monad, consider the option type maybe a, representing a value that is either a single value of type a, or no value at all. 
To distinguish these, we have two algebraic data type constructors, just T, containing the value T, or nothing, containing no value. We would like to be able to use this type as a simple sort of checked exception, at any point in a computation, the computation may fail, which causes the rest of the computation to be skipped and the final result to be nothing. If all steps of the calculation succeed, the final result is just x for some value x. In the following example, add is a function that takes two arguments of type maybe int, and returns a result of the same type. If both mx and my have just values, we want to return just their sum. But if either mx or my is nothing, we want to return nothing. If we naively attempt to write functions with this kind of behavior, we'll end up with a nested series of if nothing then nothing else do something with the x in just x cases that will quickly become unwieldy. To alleviate this, we can define operations for chaining these computations together. The bind binary operator chains the results of one computation that could fail, into a function that chooses another computation that could fail. If the first argument is nothing, the second argument is ignored and the entire operation simply fails. If the first argument is just x, we pass x to the function to get a new maybe value, which may or may not result in a just value. We already have a value constructor that returns a value without affecting the computation's additional state, just. We can then write the example as. Using some additional syntactic sugar known as do notation, the example can be written as. Since this type of operation is quite common, there is a standard function in Haskell to take two monadic values and combine their contents using another function, making it possible to write the previous example as. Writing out the definition of lift M2 yields the code presented above in due notation. The writer monad, the writer monad allows a process to carry additional information on the side, along with the computed value. This can be useful to log error or debugging information which is not the primary result. The following example implements a writer monad in JavaScript. First, a writer monad is declared. Function unit creates a new value type from a basic type with an empty log string attached to it. And bind applies a function to an old value, and returns the new result value with an expanded log. The array brackets work here as the monad's type constructor, creating a value of the monadic type for the writer monad from simpler components. Pipeline is an auxiliary function that concatenates a sequence of binds applied to an array of functions. Examples of functions that return values of the type expected by the above writer monad. Finally, an example of using the monad to build a pipeline of mathematical functions with debug information on the side. The I.O. monad, in a purely functional language, such as Haskell, functions cannot have any externally visible side effects as part of the function semantics. Although a function cannot directly cause a side effect, it can construct a value describing a desired side effect, that the caller should apply at a convenient time. In the Haskell notation, a value of type IO represents an action that, when performed, produces a value of type A. We can think of a value of type IO as an action that takes as its argument the current state of the world, and will return a new world where the state has been changed according to the function's return value. For example, the functions does file exist and remove file in the standard Haskell library have the following types. So, one can think of remove file as a function that, given a file path, returns an IO action. This action will ensure that the world, in this case the underlying file system, won't have a file named by that file path when it gets executed. Here, the IO internal value is of type which means that the caller does not care about any other outcomes. On the other hand, in does file exist, the function returns an IO action which wraps a Boolean value, true or false. This conceptually represents a new state of the world where the caller knows for certain whether that file path is present in the file system or not at the time of the action is performed. The state of the world managed in this way can be passed from action to action, thus defining a series of actions which will be applied in order as steps of state changes. This process is similar to how a temporal logic represents the passage of time using only declarative propositions. The following example clarifies in detail how this chaining of actions occurs in a program, again using Haskell. 
we would like to be able to describe all of the basic types of I.O. operations, for example write text to standard output, read text from standard input, read and write files, send data over networks, etc. In addition, we need to be able to compose these primitives to form larger programs. For example, we would like to be able to write. How can we formalize this intuitive notation? To do this, we need to be able to perform some basic operations with I.O. actions, we should be able to sequence two I.O. operations together. In Haskell, this is written as an infix operator, so that put strl and abc put strl and def is an I.O. action that prints two lines of text to the console. The type of is I.O. A and I.O. B and I.O. B, meaning that the operator takes two I.O. operations and returns a third that sequences the two together and returns the value of the second. We should have an I.O. action which does nothing. That is, it returns a value but has no side effects. In Haskell, this action constructor is called return. It is type A and I.O.A. More subtly, we should be able to determine our next action based on the results of previous actions. To do this, Haskell has an operator equals with type I.O.A. A and I.O.B. That is, the operand on the left is an I.O. action that returns a value of type A. The operand on the right is a function that can pick an I.O. action based on the value produced by the action on the left. The resulting combined action, when performed, performs the first action, then evaluates the function with the first action's return value, then performs the second action, and finally returns the second action's value. An example of the use of this operator in Haskell would be get line equals put strln, which reads a single line of text from standard input and echoes it to standard output. Note that the first operator is just a special case of this operator in which the return value of the first action is ignored and the selected second action is always the same. It is not necessarily obvious that the three preceding operations, along with a suitable primitive set of I.O. operations, allow us to define any program action whatsoever, including data transformations, if-then control flow, and looping control flows. We can write the above example as one long expression. The pipeline structure of the bind operator ensures that the getLine and put strln operations get evaluated only once and in the given order, so that the side effects of extracting text from the input stream and writing to the output stream are correctly handled in the functional pipeline. This remains true even if the language performs out of order or lazy evaluation of functions. Clearly, there is some common structure between the I.O. definitions and the maybe definitions, even though they are different in many ways. Monads are an abstraction upon the structures described above, and many similar structures, that finds and exploits the commonalities. The general monad concept includes any situation where the programmer wants to carry out a purely functional computation while a related computation is carried out on the side. Formal definition a monad is a construction that, given an underlying type system, embeds a corresponding type system into it. This monadic type system preserves all significant aspects of the underlying type system, while adding features particular to the monad. The usual formulation of a monad for programming is known as a Cligely triple, and has the following components, a type constructor that defines, for every underlying type, how to obtain a corresponding monadic type. In Haskell's notation, the name of the monad represents the type constructor. If M is the name of the monad and T is a data type, then mar T is the corresponding type in the monad. A unit function that maps a value in an underlying type to a value in the corresponding monadic type. The unit function has the polymorphic type ta mar T. The result is normally the simplest value in the corresponding type that completely preserves the original value. In Haskell, this function is called return due to the way it is used in the do notation described later. A binding operation of polymorphic type E, ta ma u, a, ma u, which Haskell represents by the infix operator equals. Its first argument is a value in a monadic type, its second argument is a function that maps from the underlying type of the first argument to another monadic type, and its result is in that other monadic type. Typically, the binding operation can be understood as having four stages, 
the monad-related structure on the first argument is pierced to expose any number of values in the underlying type T. The given function is applied to all of those values to obtain values of type. The monad-related structure on those values is also pierced, exposing values of type U. Finally, the monad-related structure is reassembled over all of the results, giving a single value of type. Given a type constructor M, in most contexts, a value of type MA can be thought of as an action that returns a value of type A. The return operation takes a value from a plane type A and puts it into a monadic container of type MA A. The bind operation chains a monadic value of type MA with a function of type or A and MA B to create a monadic value of type MA B. Monad laws For a monad to behave correctly, the definitions must obey a few axioms, together called the monad laws. The A per mil symbol indicates equivalence between two Haskell expressions in the following text return acts approximately as a neutral element of equals, in that, return x, equals f a a per mil a f x, m equals return a a per mil a m. Binding two functions in succession is the same as binding one function that can be determined from them, m equals f, equals g a a per mil a m equals. The axioms can also be expressed using expressions in two block style, do f x a a per mil a do v return x. F e, do m a a per mil a do v m. Return v, do x m. y f x. g y a a per mil a do y do x m. f x. g y, or using the monadic composition operator, x equals equals g, return equals g a a per mil a g, f, equals return a a per mil a f, f, equals g, equals h a a per mil a f, equals, f m a p in join, Although Haskell defines monads in terms of the return and bind functions, it is also possible to define a monad in terms of return and two other operations, join and FMAP. This formulation fits more closely with the original definition of monads in category theory. The FMAP operation, with type of MAR MAR U, takes a function between two types and produces a function that does the same thing to values in the monad. The join operation, with type MAR, MAR T, a MAR T, flattens two layers of monadic information into one. The two formulations are related as follows. Here, M has the type MT, N has the type M, F has the type TAU, and G has the type TAMV, where T, R, U and V are underlying types. The FMAP function is defined for any functor in the category of types and functions, not just for monads. It is expected to satisfy the functor laws. The return function characterizes pointed functors in the same category, by accounting for the ability to lift values into the functor. It should satisfy the following law. In addition, the join function characterizes monads. Additive monads An additive monad is a monad endowed with a monadic 0mzero and a binary operator MPLUS satisfying the monoid laws with the monadic zero as unit. The operator MPLUS has type MT or MT or MT, satisfies the associative law and has the zero as both left and right identity. That is. Thus, an additive monad is also a monoid. For equals, on the other hand, MZERO acts as a null element. Just as multiplying a number by zero results in zero, Binding MZERO with any function produces the zero for the result type. Similarly, binding any M with a function that always returns a zero results in a zero. Intuitively, the zero represents a value in the monad that has only monad-related structure and no values from the underlying type. In the maybe monad, nothing is a zero. In the list monad, is a zero. Syntactic sugar, do notation. Although there are times when it makes sense to use the bind operator equals directly in a program, it is more typical to use a format called do notation, that mimics the appearance of imperative languages. The compiler translates do notation to expressions involving equals. For example, the following code is transformed during compilation into it is helpful to see the implementation of the list monad, and to know that concat map maps a function over a list and concatenates the resulting lists. Therefore, 
the following transformations hold and all the following expressions are equivalent. Notice that the list, 1 2, is not used. The lack of a left pointing arrow, translated into a binding to a function that ignores its argument, indicates that only the monadic structure is of interest, not the values inside it. For example, for a state monad, this might be used for changing the state without producing any more result values. The do block notation can be used with any monad as it is simply syntactic sugar for equals. The following definitions for safe division for values in the maybe monad are also equivalent. A similar example in f using a computation expression. The syntactic sugar of the maybe block would get translated internally to the following expression. Generic monadic functions, given values produced by safe division, we might want to carry on doing calculations without having to check manually if they are nothing. We can do this using a lifting function, which we can define not only for maybe but for arbitrary monads. In Haskell this is called lift M2. Recall that arrows in a type associate to the right, so lift M2 is a function that takes a binary function as an argument and returns another binary function. The type signature says, if M is a monad, we can lift any binary function into it. For example, defines an operator which multiplies two numbers, unless one of them is nothing. The advantage here is that we need not dive into the details of the implementation of the monad. If we need to do the same kind of thing with another function, or in another monad, using lift M2 makes it immediately clear what is meant. Mathematically, the lift M2 operator is defined by other examples, identity monad, the simplest monad is the identity monad, which attaches no information to values. A do block in this monad performs variable substitution. Do zamit 2. A return a 3x results in 6. From the category theory point of view, the identity monad is derived from the adjunction between identity functors. Collections, some familiar collection types, including lists, sets, and multi-sets, are monads. The definition for lists is given here. List comprehensions are a special application of the list monad. For example, the list comprehension, 2xx, 1n, is okx, corresponds to the computation in the list monad 2x, 1n. If is okx then return else mzero. The notation of list comprehensions is similar to the set builder notation, but sets can't be made into a monad, since there's a restriction on the type of computation to be comparable for equality, whereas a monad does not put any constraints on the types of computations. Actually, the set is a restricted monad. The monads for collections naturally represent non-deterministic computation. The list represents all the possible results from different non-deterministic paths of computation at that given time. For example, when one executes x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one is saying that the variable x can non-deterministically take on any of the values of that list. If one were to return x, it would evaluate to a list of the results from each path of computation. Notice that the bind operator above follows this theme by performing f on each of the current possible results, and then it concatenates the result lists together. Statements like if condition x y then return else m z e r o are also often seen. If the condition is true, the non-deterministic choice is being performed from one dummy path of computation, which returns a value we're not assigning to anything. However, if the condition is false, then the mzero equals monad value non-deterministically chooses from zero values, effectively terminating that path of computation. Other paths of computations might still succeed. This effectively serves as a guard to enforce that only paths of computation that satisfy certain conditions can continue. So collection monads are very useful for solving logic puzzles, pseudocu, and similar problems. In a language with lazy evaluation, like Haskell, a list is evaluated only to the degree that its elements are requested, for example, if one asks for the first element of a list, only the first element will be computed. With respect to usage of the list monad for non-deterministic computation that means that we can non-deterministically generate a lazy list of all results of the computation and ask for the first of them, 
and only as much work will be performed as is needed to get that first result. The process roughly corresponds to backtracking, a path of computation is chosen, and then if it fails at some point, then it backtracks to the last branching point, and follows the next path, and so on. If the second element is then requested, it again does just enough work to get the second solution, and so on. So the list monad is a simple way to implement a backtracking algorithm in a lazy language. From the category theory point of view, collection monads are derived from a junctions between a free functor and an underlying functor between the category of sets and a category of monoids. Taking different types of monoids, we obtain different types of collections, as in the table below, state monads. A state monad allows a programmer to attach state information of any type to a calculation. Given any value type, the corresponding type in the state monad is a function which accepts a state, then outputs a new state along with a return value. Note that this monad, unlike those already seen, takes a type parameter, the type of the state information. The monad operations are defined as follows. Useful state operations include Another operation applies a state monad to a given initial state. Do blocks in a state monad are sequences of operations that can examine and update the state data. Informally, a state monad of state type S maps the type of return values T into functions of type, where S is the underlying state. The return function is simply. The bind function is. From the category theory point of view, a state monad is derived from the adjunction between the product functor and the exponential functor, which exists in any Cartesian closed category by definition. Environment monad The environment monad allows a computation to depend on values from a shared environment. The monad type constructor maps a type T to functions of type E or T, where E is the type of the shared environment. The monad functions are. The following monadic operations are useful. The ask operation is used to retrieve the current context, while local executes a computation in a modified subcontext. As in the state monad, computations in the environment monad may be invoked by simply providing an environment value and applying it to an instance of the monad. Writer monad, the writer monad allows a program to compute various kinds of auxiliary output which can be composed, or accumulated step by step, in addition to the main result of a computation. It is often used for logging or profiling. Given the underlying type T, a value in the writer monad has type W or T, where W is a type endowed with an operation satisfying the monoid laws. The monad functions are simply where I micron and are the identity element of the monoid W and its associative operation, respectively. The tell monadic operation is defined by where 1 and denote the unit type and its trivial element. It is used in combination with bind to update the auxiliary value without affecting the main computation. Continuation monad, a continuation monad with return type maps type into functions of type. It is used to model continuation passing style. The return and bind functions are as follows. The call with current continuation function is defined as follows. Others, other concepts that researchers have expressed as monads include, iterity. Exception handling, graphical user interfaces, interprocess communication, parsers, interpreters, strict evaluation, interfaces to code written in other languages, free monads. Free monads are similar to free monoids, in that they, intuitively speaking, are generic structures that fulfill the monad laws without depending on the type in question. For any type T, the free monoid of T is T with plus plus as the associative binary operation and as the unit element. In Haskell, we can write this as, whereas in a concrete monoid, one could add the values T1, T2, Tn with its binary operation. In, they are simply concatenated into, T1, T2, Tn, signifying that they belong together. What that belonging together means, however, is left unspecified. The free monad is based on the same idea. If we take list t equals nil comms t and insert a functor into it, we get the free monad. Unlike list, which stores a list of values, free stores a list of functors, wrapped around an initial value. Accordingly, 
the functor and monad instances of free do nothing other than handing a given function down that list with FMAP. Comonads, comonads are the categorical dual of monads. They are defined by a type constructor wt in two operations, extract with type wt a t for any t, and extend with type a wt a wt. The operations extend and extract are expected to satisfy these laws. Alternatively, comonads may be defined in terms of operations fmap, extract and duplicate. The fmap and extract operations define w as a co-pointed functor. The duplicate operation characterizes comonads, it is type wt or w and satisfies the following laws. The two formulations are related as follows. Whereas monads could be said to represent side effects, a comonad w represents a kind of context. The extract function extracts a value from its context, while the extend function may be used to compose a pipeline of context-dependent functions of type w a or b, identity comonad. The identity comonad is the simplest comonad, it maps type t to itself. The extract operator is the identity and the extend operator is function application. Product comonad, the product comonad maps type into tuples of type, where is the context type of the comonad? The comonad operations are function comonad, the function comonad maps type into functions of type, where is a type endowed with a monoid structure? The comonad operations are where i micron is the identity element of and is its associative operation. Costate comonad, the costate comonad maps a type into type, where s is the base type of the store. The comonad operations are see also, arrows in functional programming a euro whereas monads generalize the results of a computation to effects, arrows further generalize the input similarly. Aspect-oriented programming, a paradigm to increase modularity by isolating secondary or supporting functionality. Effect system, an alternative way of describing side effects as types. Inversion of control a euro the abstract principle of calling specific functions from a reusable software entity. Monad transformers a euro, which allow monads to be composed in a modular and convenient way. Uniqueness types. An alternative way of dealing with side effects in functional languages, notes, references, external links, Haskell Monad Tutorials, Monad Tutorials Timeline Probably the most comprehensive collection of links to Monad Tutorials, ordered by date. Piponi, Dan. You could have invented monads. A Neighborhood of Infinity AA Euro The most famous blog post tutorial. Yorgi, Brent. The Type Classopedia. The Monad Reader, 17 a Euro 68 a a Euro An attempt to explain all of the leading type of classes in Haskell in an elementary way, with monadic functors considered as only one form, best understood by comparison with others, for example, the more general idea of a functor as something you can map over. Applicative functors, and so forth. Contains an extensive bibliography. Yorgi, Brent. Abstraction, Intuition, and the Monad Tutorial Fallacy. Bloger Brent, String. WordPress.com AA Euro opposes the idea of making a tutorial about monads in particular. What a monad is not deals with common misconceptions and oversimplifications in a humorous way, Bales Bob. How you should, now Euro unregistered trademark T, use monad. No ordering. WordPress.com AA Euro takes a similar point of view, locating monads in a much wider array of Haskell functor classes, of use only in special circumstances. Vania, Mike. Yet another monad tutorial. Mike's World O Programming. Live Journal AA Euro An extremely detailed set of tutorials, deriving monads from first principles. A fistful of monads are an explanation of monads. Building on the concepts of functors, applicative functors and monoids discussed in the previous chapter. Functors, applicatives and monads in pictures. A humorous beginner's guide to monads. Older tutorials, all about monads, Haskell Wiki, monads as computation, Haskell Wiki, monads as containers, Novial, Theodore. Monads for the working Haskell programmer. 
Memorial University of Newfoundland or Klinger, Stefan. The Haskell Program a Euro Unregistered Trademark S Guide to the IO Monad a Euro Donia Euro Unregistered Trademark T Panic. Center for Telematics and Information Technology, University of Twente. Isna 1381-3625A, Chorov, Adam. Introduction to Haskell, Part 3, Monads. On Lamp O'Reilly Media A, Monads A Monad Tutorial Providing Examples of Non-Trivial Monads Apart from the Conventional Iolist State Monads. Zar Paragraph I Limes, Atagrul. Understanding Haskell Monads A, Other Documentation, Van Tuel, Henk Jan. A Tour of the Haskell Monad Functions A, Mogi, Eugenio. Notions of Computation and Monads A A Euro The Original Paper Suggesting Use of Monads for Programming, Wadler, Philip. Monads for Functional Programming. University of Glasgow A A Euro Describes Monads in Haskell, Scala Monad Tutorials, League, Chris. Monadology, Professional Help for Type Anxiety. New York City, New York Scala Enthusiasts A, Morris, Tony. Understanding Monads Using Scala I Tonya Euro Unregistered Trademark S Blog I A, I A, James. Monads are Elephants A, Meredith, Gregory. Pro Scala, Monadic Design Patterns for the Web PA 300 A, Monads in Other Languages, Monads in Perl, Monads in Ruby, Monads in Python, Monads in Scala, Monads in Clojure, Monads in JavaScript, Introduction to Monads in C and L I N Q. Library of Monads for C, Monads in OCaml, Monads in PHP.